Welcome to the My Record News. I'm your ranker, the Rosielum, and if you punch a mirror, you're only hurting yourself. Our top story today, everything is going to be flipped outside its axis today because crazy stuff has been happening. We had Magia Day, we had this news video that I was trying to record yesterday, but then found out that my microphone recorded gobbled mess for no fucking reason. So we're now doing both the news and the My Record News all in one video, which means there's a... This might be the most news-packed video for this entire year. So let's 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 start. Let's let's go. First off, it's going to be new voiced uh, main story chapters as well as new challenge chapters for both chapter 11 of Arc 2 and the first part of Arc uh, of Arc 2 chapter 12, because we're now at the very end. So they want to make sure that everything's going to be voiced and has a challenge mode, basically at the same time or very close to each other at least. Next up, what we have is special back. So we're actually at the, if you're watching this video right now when it comes out, we're at the final battle right now. This is Arc 2 final battle, okay? And for the final battle, what do we have? We get special bags. For 500 paid gems, you get an innocent gem and an overlimited core. Terrible, terrible uh, thing to actually use your paid gems for. Don't do this. This is a really bad deal, so don't actually do this. But, however, we also get uh, uh, bags for normal gems, for unpaid gems, and these are actually pretty good. Uh, I would say that all of these are actually worth it. I bought two of each of these, uh, which is as much as you can buy, because I think they're very much worth the uh, investment that you get for these. So yeah, some bags, these are nice. Don't get the paid one, especially because we just finished our anniversary, and during anniversary we had bags that were way fucking better than this one. So just don't do it. I see a whale, of course. If you're a whale, then I guess the price doesn't matter that much. Next up, what do we have? We have the half AP double experience campaign. It doesn't matter, whatever. It, it keeps going. It, like, it always keeps going, okay? Next chapter for main story. You probably have already seen this because, like I said, this video is like a day or two late, but that wasn't really my fault. Um, so you've probably already done the next main story chapter, but yeah, we have the final battle against the most evil character that Magi Record or the entire Madoka franchise has ever seen, Mikoto, uh, who, which you've probably already played. And if you haven't, remember to tap that glass. Next up, what do we have? Well, some other stuff like the new app version and whatever, doesn't really matter, but also a Mirrors tournament for Japanese residents. If you don't know Japanese residents, is not gonna be anything that you need to worry about but for Japanese residents uh, there's two mirror tournaments one for natural one stars and natural two stars there's only one natural one star actually two if you count Iroha but no one's playing Iroha in ranked um, tournament for that and then a tournament for natural three stars on the 15th of October for Japanese residents so yeah for six, only 64 people get to actually select like by the way do I sometimes get asked this about yeah you keep saying this is for Japanese residents but what is it actually well basically you send in an application to enter this tournament this is also this is something that I haven't done myself because how could I I'm not a Japanese ich bin Deutscher I'm from German uh, Germany so I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be able to do this but the point is, you send in an application, and then 64 people get uh, selected to enter this tournament. And when you send in your application, you have to put it in a Japanese address. So theoretically, you could lie about your address. But why would you? Because they gotta send you... If you win something, they're gonna send you the rewards. And if you lie about where you live, like if you say, Oh, I'm in Germany, but I'm gonna act like I live in Japan and just give a fake address. My rewards are gonna get sent to a fake address somewhere in Japan, which, <laughs> where the fuck would I do that? That sounds stupid as fuck. But yeah, theoretically you could do that. But yeah, so 64 people per tournament uh, get selected. And by the way, these are actually the devs themselves, as far as I know, selecting people. So they will see like, oh, Horai, that's a person that I know. I'm gonna select, I'm gonna have that person enter the tournament. Or uh, Hato, that's a person that I know. Like the developers themselves are like, oh, we know this person. We know that they have spent a lot of money on the game. So we will let them enter this tournament. It's kind of like that. So this is really only for the top whales of the top whales in Japan to do this, and they actually and they get actual physical prizes like uh, an actual trophy, which usually features lewd art of Mitama. Anyway, the point is, after that, what else do we get? Well, there's a change to the counter mechanic. So if you've played Asuka or Asuka, like just Asuka, because who who fucking else has counter? And I know I'm gonna get comments about, but this other character has counter. But 
the point is most people only know Asuka for having counter, which is when you get hit, you counter back. I think Sayaka has this as well, maybe. But yeah, on her Magia, Sayaka has this. Uh, they are going to add a change to this where if you have barrier and you absorb all of the damage, before you wouldn't actually counter. Like you couldn't counter if you had a barrier. But now they're making it so that even if you have a barrier, you can still counter. Why would they do that, right? Why would they make a chain so you can counter even if you have a barrier up, unless they made a unit who has barrier and counter? So here's Miko Dosena who has barrier and counter. And what she does is that she's a support type void unit, because of course she's a void type unit. And here's the thing about Mikoto. It's like I said earlier, she's maybe the most like evil character that the entire Madoka franchise has ever seen. Think of the most evil character you think, Isabo? <laughs> Fucking nothing against the evil that is Mikoto. So the reason why Mikoto is so evil is because she is, and I don't see this as a spoiler, so I'm just gonna say it, because it's basically being spelled out everywhere right here. She is the Shdewarim. And the reason why uh, it's, it's not a surprise to me that she is void type, even though she's not an adjuster. Because before, only adjusters have been void type. But I, but I was like, dude, Mikoto, she has to be void type. She can only be void type. Because void type is all about curses, about impurity, about the magic that witches use and all that kind of stuff. But to be more precise, the reason why I, it was so obvious that she was going to be void type is because she is actually... Mitama brain parasite since the events of arc 1 which is why she had to be a void type so it makes sense that she is void type she's the first not just the void type uh, what does she actually do is like i said she's a support type with 3xl that's really good and as you would know from her backstory she of course was going to be good in mirrors. How good is she actually in mirrors? She's probably automatic include in most ranked mirror teams, unless the rest of her spur enhancement sucks. So this is the kind of character where you kind of have to wait for the full review of this character to come out because the rest of her spur enhancement notes are extremely important about what she's actually like, okay? So her spur enhancement kind of is the important part, but we don't know all of her notes yet, so wait for the review. But it at least looks like she's going to be a really important Mirrors character. She her, she has a connect, I guess. The connect does guaranteed provoke, guaranteed barrier, or just barrier for 8,000 damage, as well as guaranteed strengthened counter. Now we know counter from the game, like I said, Asuka has that. Uh, basically, the way a counter works is that if you get hit and your counter procs, like let's say it's a percentage chance, and your counter activates, what would happen is the way it's programmed is that you would be attacking with an, with a random counter disc, and this counter disc deals 80% of the damage of your attack damage. So, to put that into perspective, because this doesn't really mean anything by itself, but to put that into perspective, in a Puella combo, uh, your Excel disc is 100% of your attack power, okay? So, if you compare this to a Puella combo Excel disc, this is about 80% of that damage that you would deal on your attack with the counter. But of course, because counter happens on the enemy turn, you might not have certain connect buffs, or and you might, you're might you not going to have certain disc buffs because the disc doesn't have a type. So it's usually a bit less than that, so let's say it's about... 60% or maybe like two-thirds of your attack uh, power, so two-thirds of what an Excel disc would be on a Puella combo. That's maybe about the kind of damage that we're looking at for a uh, counter. But this is strengthened counter. What is strengthened counter, you might ask? Well, good thing you asked, because I don't fucking know. No one fucking knows what strength and counter actually is because I don't think there's anyone in the game right now who currently has that. And if there is, please tell me in the comments below because I don't know. But maybe it's maybe it's just a little more damage. Maybe it's a lot more damage. Maybe it's something completely fucking different. We don't know. But yeah, it's strength and counter guaranteed uh, to the target you connect to as well as provoke and the barrier, which is actually a really good connect for defensive purposes. Next up, the Magia, it deals damage to all enemies, but Roman numeral 1. The reason why that is important is because Sudachi also has no Roman numeral 1, or I think like something as low as that, and it does basically no damage. 
which means her Magia and her Doppel will deal basically no damage. Unless you build her like completely offensively. But on a base level, on a base level, just build, deals basically no damage, okay? Well, what does it do? It gives guaranteed strengthened counter and barrier for 5,000 damage to all allies. So you're shielding all allies and you give counter to all allies, which that's, sounds pretty all right for mirrors. Mm -hmm. And it also gives reflect. Reflect? What the fuck? Reflect a debuff back at the enemy? Yeah, that's a new kind of effect that they've in uh, introduced into the game because she is uh, very themed around mirrors, as you could guess. Um, and so they said this kind of mirrors character, this mirror, this mirror character needs to have mirror where character abil abilities and therefore they've said she reflects a debuff okay so in main story if you're playing main story chapter 12 uh, you actually will play against the mirrors which uh, character who uh, has also got the reflect uh, debuff ability that she uses against you and you might have already seen it through that but yeah it, it does exactly what it sounds like you take it, if you throw a debuff onto that thing, let's say you'd use a minus 50% attack down, uh, attack up, like a 50% attack down against this Mikoto. That thing just gets bounced right back in your face and now you get 50% attack down. Doesn't that fucking suck? Keep that in mind when you fight against her in mirrors when she uses her magia. It also, by the way, the her magia also does something else. It also gives MP gain up when damaged to self, which is... A pretty good effect actually it also gives barrier uh, you also have a uh, hold up you also have the active which gives barrier to self the active also gives reflect one debuff to self so she also does it to active and it also gives guardian to self this is really important so that you if you play against mikoto and you let the enemy mikoto get a turn she's going to activate guardian similar to what uh Sudachi does she also i think no who does provoke but similar effect but yeah, she also does reflect a debuff and gain barrier. She also gains MP regen. Okay, so this is the actual, probably the most important part about her kit, in my opinion at least, when it comes to like general play, not just mirrors, but general play, uh, is that when she starts the battle, she gives everyone on her team MP regen for like 3.5, 4 MP or something like that for the first three turns, which is pretty darn good actually but yeah she gives everyone an mp regen at the start of the battle which is pretty nice which also in uh, would include mirrors battles she also gives herself strength and counter because of course she fucking does passively at the start of a battle and she also gives herself anti-magia seal always she just has anti-magia seal but like i said we need more information about the rest of her se to be able to figure out what she actually does but it seems like She's kind of tailor-made for mirrors, because of course she is. She's the mirrors witch character. So what else do we have? We have Mikoto in her realm, Mikoto in mirrors, which uh, gives her chance to ignore provoke and chance to ignore damage cut, which to me sounds like chance to kill Sudachi or chance to ignore Sudachi. Which on one hand, if you're not fighting against Surachi, it feels not that important. It feels actually kind of fucking terrible to have a memorial like this. On the other hand, if you're using Surachi, you're rolling the dice if you're going to be effective or not. And I am not a fan of rolling the dice. If a memoria is terrible, just let it be terrible and then you don't have to use it. If a memoria is good, just let it be good and then you can just use it and you're gonna be fine. Don't make a memoria that's either the worst thing ever or could be the best thing ever, but only on a chance. Because then I'm going to wanna rip the rest of my hair out whenever I play this memoria in mirrors and it doesn't proc. Which sucks. So I hate this memorial. I really fucking do. So then we have a memorial down here, which has a picture with the most evil character that Marika franchise has ever seen uh, in it, and Hana next to it. Uh, what does it do? It gives uh, attack up a chance to ignore defense. Like who cares? Moving on from uh, Mikoto. What else do we have? We have the event. Oh, we have the Mikoto event, which is all about her realm, which is all about the mirrors 
dimension, which has uh, a single tower in it with just random stages. It's just a mirror. It's just a single tower. It's just a single tower themed after mirrors, uh, and that's it. It's just a single tower. It's 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 nothing special. Once again, the most evil character in all of Mario Record and Hana in the same picture for the event bonuses. And that's it, that's, that's all that we're talking about here. And that would be the end of this video after uh, like eight, 60 minutes, but we still have like two more minutes for the Magia Day. So the thing, here's the thing about Magia Day. This time they announced some uncaps as always, so here's the uncaps, but while you look at the uncaps and being like, oh my God, it's Rika uncap, yeah, whoa. Here's the thing about Magia Day this time. Instead of announcing things, they weren't going to implement in the next year anyway, like Tsuyu, which they didn't uh, implement un uh, even now for the next year. Uh, so they fucking lied about that. Um, and they also announced Scene Zero, which we also didn't get shit about uh, this, uh, this time. So be, instead of announcing things that they weren't going to add to the game within the next year anyway, they said that this year, this year we're going to announce things that will actually be in the game before next year, like before next year's Magia Day. Isn't that a concept? Isn't that a concept that you're only actually talking about things that are actually going to be in there before next time? Isn't that, isn't that a thing? So here's the thing that we're gonna get before next Magia Day. On one hand, these four uncaps. Next up, the Magia Chip Shop Improvement. So the Magia Chip and Magia Chips are the ones that you probably don't have that many. You get them for having, uh, if, if you have a four slot character already of a low rarity type, let's say for example a Yachu. Let's say you have a Yachu already has uh, four slots and you get more, uh, more of a Destiny gem. So you can then turn those into Magia Chips and you can buy up to I think like 30 or 20 Magia Chips every event as well in the shop. Those are like the main ways of getting Magia Chips and that shop usually before only had uh, like slots for characters. You can buy slots for any character that you have that is low rarity. So for low rarity characters you can get slots. But now they're saying we're going to make sure you can buy other things with your market chips. What can you buy with other, what, what other things can you buy with your market chips? Well, you can buy old event ma uh, memoria. For example, the mystery Halloween theater or the, the story starts here thing, which is that the one that gives MP start? It might be the one that gives MP start. But yeah, like other event memoria that are currently no longer available, you can get some of those, which might mean you could potentially get QB9, but I'm not sure about that. But yeah, you can get a bunch of old memoria. What else can you get? You can get over limited cores in a limited fashion, a limited amount of over limited cores and a limited amount of innocent gems. Now, the important part about innocent gems is that innocent gems are the items that allow you to get a slot for any character that you have. Let's say you have, for example, an anime Yachio, okay? And she is only two slot and she's not currently running in the gacha. Well, you can use an innocent gem to just give her a third slot. You can just do that. She, it, it just gives any character another slot. And a limited amount of these are available in the Magia chip shop. Isn't that incredible? That is actually pretty good. What else do we get? Well, uh, there's improvements to the memoria selection where you can select all memoria in a in the archive at once. Who the fuck ever cares about that? Uh, but more importantly, they're going to make some improvements to how assets are stored in the data files and therefore the actual application, like Maga Record, the application will be one gigabyte less on your hard drive. Okay, sure, whatever. Next up, the more important parts. Uh, Tsuyu and Chizuru, which are these two characters, Tsuyu, which is Ayaka from Genshin Impact, and Chizuru, who might be from uh, a Naruto movie, uh, they're both getting an event, but not just that. We're not just getting a Tsuyu and Chizuru event, they also said that there's going to be multiple events in historical settings, because Tsuyu and Chizuru are like a few hundred years in the past, 
and they say, oh, we're going to have multiple events in the past. Maybe this means Cleopatra will be uh, in there. Who knows? Maybe Jatviga of Poland will be in there. Like, whenever some people talk about historical magical girls, I always go like, can't, can't we get a Jatviga magical girl series? That would be, oh, that would be so good. Anyway, that, but yeah, more historical, or like ancient uh, Megoka. And yes, I know that Suyu and Chizuru weren't actual people. They were they're fictional people, but still they're fictional people in the past. So fictional history, whatever, who cares? Point is, more events that play in the past or something like that. Next up, changes to ranked mirrors. Now don't click away because I know that none of you people care about ranked mirrors. I don't either. But this is actually really fucking important. So here's the thing about ranked mirrors. They're going to rank mirrors in the future are going to be different. First off, every ranked mirrors will have its own rule set. For example, they might be like, oh, for this ranked mirrors, all fire type characters will have bonus stats like more attack and more defense, whatever. Or in this ranked mirrors, all magia will uh, have bonus MP gain or whatever. Like you will, you will just get more MP, something like that. Uh, like there will be different uh, rule sets for every kind of ranked mirrors that happens from now on uh, to just spice up things between ranked mirrors. Next up, they're going to change the entire uh, point system, like how you gain points. Uh, this will be a little bit weird because we don't know that much about this system yet, okay? So this system, I'm going to explain what we know about it, but we're going to be missing a lot of information. So a lot of information, you will just have to wait until they actually reveal more about this information in the future. But for now, they said that they want the only thing that matters to be your win-loss ratio. Okay? Both your wins compared to your losses on defense, that is what's going to uh, give you your rank. So let's say, for example, you have 98% win rate. Like, you win all your battles on offense, and on defense, you still win like 99% of your battles or whatever. And overall, everything combined, you have like a 98% win rate or whatever. And like, uh, let's see, let's, let's see, win like 95% battles on defense, doesn't matter. But the point is, in total, you have like 98% win rate on both offense and defense combined then you're going to get S rank. Something like that, right? Like the only thing that is your win rate on both offense and defense combined. Now you might be thinking that, oh, well, right now, if I'm playing offense, I need one team. And if I'm uh, if I'm not playing right now and other people are getting my team, then I'm on defense. And I'm on defense, then I need a different team, right? Isn't it kind of stupid to have a system like that when I need to have one team on offense and one team on defense? Well, the developers agree with that. So what the developers are doing is they're going to make sure that in the future, what's going to happen is you're going to be actually be able to select two teams. You will have one offense team and one defense team. And that is really fucking important. So yeah, in the future, Ranked Mirrors, you will have an offense team that is hopefully going to win 100% of the time to gain points, but the points that you get might be depending on your the amount of characters on your team. We don't fucking know yet. Like I said, wait for another update of this in the future. Everything that I'm saying right now is still tentative and might change in the future. But yeah, so on offense, you want to have 100% win rate. Uh, and on defense, so you're going to put a defense team up. And when other people play ranked mirrors, they will see your defense team. And you're trying to get to as close as possible to 100% defense uh, rate. Okay? Which means that everyone, here's the fun part to all you guys, everyone will be baiting. Every single team that you're going to see in ranked mirrors will be a bait team. Doesn't that fucking sound fun yeah but yeah everyone's gonna have an an offense team that just wins 100 percent of battles and everyone will have a defense team that's just bait oh, i can't wait for it this will be great uh when, when i say this will be great i mean this will be great for whales probably because they don't have to worry about offense and defense at the same time they don't have to do some kind of crazy dumb bullshit with like uh teams uh, with like people colluding like collusion ends with this basically uh like collusion was actually a problem in past mirrors but collusion cheating is no longer an issue with this new system, or at least less of a problem. Uh, but the average player for the average player, if you are a free-to-play player who likes to go for A or S rank, have fun dodging bait teams. <sighs> Doesn't that sound fun? Okay, that's the changes for ranked. Uh, next up, there will be a new type of event. And when I say new type of event, I mean 
the type of event that has already happened three years ago, but that we haven't seen since. Okay, this is an event that we really haven't seen in like years. It's the raid event, like right? And I'm, when I say raid event, you think, oh, well, Purgis not. You probably are someone who's been watching this since uh, NA Marvel and think, oh, well, Purgis not. Kind of, but not really. So here's the thing how raid events usually work. You have a big map in front of you, and on this map you see different uh, witches spawning, okay? So you see a witch spawn in front of you, you click on that witch. When you click on that witch, you get sent into a boss fight of varying difficulty. There's like three difficulties, like an easy witch, there's a medium witch, and there's a hard witch, okay? And you want to kill as many hard witches as possible because it gives you more event currency, more points. Now when you go into a battle, here's the thing, you only get like 5 or so turns or whatever to try and do as much damage as possible. Similar to Kimochi. So similar to Kimochi, you get a certain amount of turns, do as much damage as possible, as possible, and the witch might have like 100 or 600 million HP. Let's say they have 600 million HP, you can't do that yourself, okay? So after your 5 turns are over, the witch might have like 400 million HP left. So after that, the witch stays up. The witch stays alive with the 400 million HP it has left, and then, and this is the this is the fun part about uh, uh, raid events, is that witch gets then uh, transferred to other players. Other players see that witch pop up on their map, like here's a witch that has 400 million HP left. Do you want to help kill that witch? And then other players could click on that witch and help you kill that witch, okay? So uh, you would like spawn a witch and then everyone would come together to try and fight that witch together by dealing as much damage as possible. So like it's like Kimochi, but everyone fighting against the same Kimochi at the same time trying to kill that Kimochi, right? And the thing is we haven't had an event like this in about three years. The last time I think was... It was, it might have been the rerun of the Chocolate Nagisa event. So that is just like the Chocolate here Nagisa, the Valentine's Nagisa. Uh, that had an event, and then there was another event, which I forgot which one it was. Some other character had an event that was also a raid event, and then there was a rerun of the uh, Nagisa event, and those were raid events. So I think in grand total, including reruns, three events about three years ago, or like two and a half years ago. And then they never did it again. And I was told that the reason why they never did it again is because the servers died. Uh, and I didn't experience this myself. To me, the servers seemed stable, but I heard that apparently it was a really big strain on the servers to have all of these people fighting at the same time against the same uh, witch. Uh, I mean, it was separately, but they all re had to uh, record their damage values at the same time. So this, they're doing it again, but this time there's going to be some changes, okay? So they run this event again, <coughs> or this type of event again, but with changes. First off, uh, people, uh, only some character, uh, only some players rather, are able to actually fight the witch themselves. Okay, so long-time players or like veteran players, they've said they're going to be fighting the witch themselves. But like people who haven't played the game in that long, people who aren't that strong, uh, they aren't fighting the witch themselves, but rather they are fighting the witch's minions. Okay. So you have two battles going on at the same time. You have the witch battle and you have the minion battle, okay? Okay? And like noobs fight the minions, veterans fight the witch. And when noobs kill minions, the veterans get damage bonuses. They will do more damage the more minions have been killed by the uh, noob players. And apparently there's stamps you can uh, post. It, and when you post a stamp, it gets like sent to other players. And you can like communicate with other players like that, but you can like you can send up a, a, a stamp that's like I'm doing great, and then other players will see the stamp going I'm doing great, and you're like, thanks. Why did you have to tell me that? That was pointless. But yeah, apparently they're doing something similar to that, and that will be the new kind of raid event for the future. I think the way this event is going to work out is that veterans will see a witch and just kill it in two turns and noobs don't get to do anything. Probably. Who knows. But yeah, uh, how is it? How are we doing with news? I think that's actually all the news. I don't think there's anything else you need to talk about. We don't have any news for scene zero yet. Probably because they, 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 there might be a fan fest for FRS. Like there, there, there might be like more news coming in a few months. Maybe, maybe not, we don't know. But the point is for now, that's all we have. And 
we're probably going to get everything. Like here's the thing, we're actually going to get everything they've announced before next year's Magia Day. Which sounds like, well, duh, of course we're going to get everything they just announced before next year's Magia Day. But that wasn't true for last Magia Day, because in 2021 they announced shit that we didn't even get until now. Which is Chizuru, uh, or Tsuyu rather, and uh, Kui and Chizuru, and Scene Zero. We still don't have those. Where the fuck is it? So this time they only announced things they might actually be uh, putting into the game before next year. That was that. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Hit that subscribe button. Ring that bell. And I'll see you guys next time.